Hello, my name is Steve Bostador and I am with BozTech Software and I am going to show you how to use BozTech Venom, that's V-E-N-M, Remote Desktop Manager to monitor the computers in your classrooms. So first of all, you need to get BozTech Venom and you can do that from boztech.com slash venom or if you just go to boztech.com it'll just take you there and you're at this screen you can either click on downloads and go to download it from there or you can just scroll down below the screenshot here and hit download now and that's going to download a small executable setup that you really just kind of next through and once you've nexted through that you can you'll have this icon on your desktop so let's launch boztech venom 2015 and i'm going to put it in trial mode right now and it's a fully functional trial so there's absolutely nothing crippled during the trial and now I'm going to initially open up this default group and you see that there is nothing there. The first thing that we need to do, I do this in every one of the videos that I that I put up here on YouTube, we need to go in and, and tell Boztec Venom what service account to use while managing the computers in your network and that service account should be a domain admin or it should have explicit administrative privileges on each of the computers that you're going to be managing on here. So let's click on preferences. I'm going to go to security and identity and then let's click on here and this is where we're going to put in our service account which for me is venom underscore svc and the password and the domain will be the domain that it's joined to and that is geolist for this particular lab. So I'm going to click OK and I'm right now on the teacher's computer I, did, I need to make that clear <laughs> and so on this computer I now need to add the student PCs into my console here. So I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm going to choose Active Directory Picker because this is a, a domain join school and all of our PCs are joined to the domain and all of our student PCs begin with the word student and then a number after them so I'm going to click on advanced and instead of typing them in manually I'm going to do a search for anything that starts with the word student and I'm going to find now and here they are so the student PCs I'm going to add in here select them all and hit OK and then hit OK again and voila, they're there, they're in the list now. Now I can manage these PCs using the service account that I set on here. So I'm going to show you how to take onesie twosie screenshots of these things first. So if you click on student one and you hit this little icon here, it looks like a camera, it's going to connect to the remote computer and it's going to take a screenshot and then display it in this window. So you know, right now you could see that this person is learning how to cheat. <laughs> and and as they're scrolling through the screenshots will refresh but I want to refresh more often because this seems interesting so, so I'm going to go every one second and now it's going to refresh as he's refreshing through each one of these things you can see what he's doing you know, so maybe I want to capture these screenshots so that I can send them off to administration so what I would do that for that is to click on archive screenshots it's going to ask me where do I want to archive them. I'm going to make a new folder here and I'll call it busted. <laughs> and under the busted folder is where I'm going to store all of these JPEGs. Now I'm going to let it go for a few minutes and let it capture a few of these images. And then those will now, those I can turn that on and off and those will now be in the busted folder. Let's browse for that folder and see where that's at. So I had that under my documents and under Venom and there's busted. And then there's the IP address that it was capturing from. And here are the images. So these images I can cap I can send off to you know whoever along with them to say, look, this person's been cheating. So let's look at some of these other computers too. We'll minimize that while that's going and let's check out student two PC and see what they're doing. Now let's, let's up the timer on this to every one second too, because I don't feel like waiting. Oh, they're watching a video. It looks like the video of the Windows 10 launch. So as you can see, while it's capturing the video, it's capturing pretty good images of the video and sending it over the wire. This is a gigabit connection between these computers. You could speed it up to actually continuous, and it'll go as fast as it can possibly send these pictures over the wire. So 
you know, the speed that you get out of this really depends on the connection between your teacher PC and your students PCs. If you're all in the same LAN connected to the same switch, it'll be very similar to this. So let's close out of this one. Let's go to student 3 PC. You can do the same thing. Let's speed that one up to, con to every one second. We'll see what they're doing. And they are currently on GeoScribe. <laughs> and they are probably just looking around town to find, you know, where to eat or what cool things to see maybe during their lunch break or something. But they're certainly not working, so we can archive these ones also. So I'm going to show you another way to go about doing this. You know, it's, it's all nice to have them in windows like this, but what if we want to look at them in a full grid view so we can see all of them at once? We can do that by selecting all of your computers and right-clicking and let's say go down to thumbnails and let's add to a new tab. So in the new tab we'll give it a name, we'll call it Room 203. And all of these computers will then screen capture down to the Room 203 tab. You can have as many tabs as you, as you would like. You could have Room 204, 205, 206, whatever. And as you see, it's now capturing these things into tabs or into into thumbnails instead of to uh, the the larger screens. Now, I have a lot of the same options here for the interval. I, I have it set to 0.5, which is as fast as it goes for this. But you could type in a different number here. I could go two. Oops, I probably shouldn't put a slash in there. There, and hit enter. It it obeys that. I, we I, we left that. You know, typeable for a reason so that you can do that. Uh, but by default, the drop downs are in the order of minutes half a minute, one minute, and so on. So we have also the option to archive these screenshots. If I go here and I hit archive screen captures, I'm going to let that go for a few minutes. And I, well, that, while that's capturing screenshots, I'm going to show you some of these options. If you click on options, you can choose a different archive path. If it's blank, it's just going to use the default archive path, and I'll show you where that is in a, in a couple of minutes. Same thing with the temp path. This is where, when these pictures are being brought back to your computer, where is that temp path going to be? And sometimes you might want to modify the default because you have a faster location, so it might get better performance, but the default is usually fine. So we'll leave those and close. So let's go back and right click this now and let's say, let's look at the archive folder. So if you bring that up now, you can see the archive path that it shows is the program path, screenshots, the IP address of the computer, and then all of the JPEGs that it captures are right under here. And these are just standard JPEG pictures that you can print or send to administration or whoever you need to send them to. So you could you know, resize these also. So let's grab this and we can bring it down a couple notches. We can bring it down to a very small little thumbnail. So if you have 45 computers all screen capturing, you'll probably want these to be pretty small sizes. Uh, another couple options is if you could right click these things and you could choose go to the computer entry. And it'll take you to the actual computer entry where then you can do all of the administrative functions that BOSTEC offers in addition to the screen captures. So you could also connect to VNC if the computer has VNC on it. This computer does not have VNC on it, so it's going to fail miserably. <laughs> uh, but if it did, you could have you could open up and you know VNC on that. You can open the archive folder. You can open the full image. So that's the full image of the last time that it captured. Or you could just remove that PC completely from the list. So that is archive screen or screen capturing and archiving with Boztech. Venom Remote Desktop Manager, and it's really that simple. It doesn't require VNC or anything to be on the remote end. It's uh, and it's pretty lightweight to use. So that's it. Uh, you can download from BozTech.com and keep a lookout on our YouTube channel for more training videos. Thank you.